public school? Put your hand up, teach it. How old are you? No, or is that just me? Oh. Welcome to the University of Maine at Presque Isle. My name is Vanessa Patnode, and I'm a teacher here at the university. And I'm also a member of the Distinguished Lecturer Series Committee. And that committee brings speakers from Maine and beyond um, on a various topic. Sometimes they're academia, sometimes they're businessmen. Um, so a variety of topics, a variety of viewpoints. And tonight you're going to hear some different viewpoints. Um, so I'm very pleased to introduce our speaker for the month of February. Dr. James holds a PhD from Western Michigan University and a JD from WMU's Thomas Cooley Law School. Over the past 15 years, she has taught courses in criminal justice, sociology, gender and justice, and drug and alcohol abuse at colleges across the country such as the University of Dayton, Walsh University, and Briarcliff University. She has received numerous teaching awards, was named to Who's Who's Among America's Teachers, and served as the president of the Ohio Council of Criminal Justice Education. She currently is a faculty member in the Criminal Justice Department at Lindenwood, Lindenwood excuse me, University in Belleville, Illinois. This morning, I had the pleasure, and there's several faces I recognize in here, of uh, uh, observing her in the classroom. And it was very engaging, it was so much fun, and the students really thought about a different, different sides of the topic. So um, I think tonight will be fun, it'll be entertaining, and uh, hopefully you will uh, think about things a little differently. Dr. James. thinking to myself, you know, I talk pretty loud, so I don't know if this was the best idea, but we're going to run with it. How's that? Okay. So the title of my presentation is Our Women Shadow. Our Women Shadow. Okay. So let me just give a, a disclaimer. I'm going to have a lot of information if at the end you want, because I know some of you have to write a paper. Yay! Okay. No! Some of you have to write a paper, so you might want the information. You can always email me to get the information. And of course, once the presentation is over, I love to talk to people afterwards. So I'm totally open to that. But I'm only going to talk on the surface of the topic. I just really, in the time frame, because we just have an hour, I can't really go into any depth. Um, so I'm going to talk about the surface, and then at the end, I'm going to open the floor to some questions. But even with the questions and stuff, I might say, well, hey, that's really a longer conversation. Let's just talk about that at the end. And I see you looking at the time already, Chandler. Uh, so I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried. OK. Then this is supposed to be interactive. So it's supposed to be a discussion. So if you haven't caught on, the reason that I have the name text is that I'll probably call on you. So everyone should be nervous at that point. Are we all nervous? Yes. But up here, we have some. Okay, she has two name tags on and I was told to only look at one. So I'm a little worried about Samantha. It's Samantha, right? Yeah, a little worried, So, but we'll go from there. Okay. All right, so let's go to the survey. I'm actually going to ask you to go to, to the Kahoot for me. Right away. Okay. And I was told this would work. Yeah, here we go. So give me just, okay, they don't see it. I think this will be a moment where I need some help. <laughs> oh, I know. Escape. I got it. I got it. I got it. No, I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> Everybody see it? Yeah. Sorry about that. And this is just for the one question, so I'm a little <laughs> nervous about the next. Okay. Okay. Okay, so if everybody can put in that number. Uh, you want to make sure that you use uh, an appropriate 
name too. No naughty. Sure, but if that was true, why aren't we equal now? 
if, if, if you believe it, if, we, if you believe that we want everyone to be equal, we will put that into place. Yes. I What's your first name? Ines. Okay. Um, I don't think everyone wants it to be equal. Okay. Like for me as a woman, I do want it to be equal just because it does affect me. Okay. So like someone else, like a man, and some um, like in power because that would like shift the power. They don't necessarily want it to be and equal. And let me pause there. Russell, you're in power. You're a man. Do you want to share? I'm Going off of her analogy. Or I mean, you're like, I hey, say, I'm equal. I mean, I would say yes, I was born, but I don't identify as I have power. Like, okay. Like, I identify, there's people who have a lot more power than me. Sure. Within not just my household, but in just everyday living. Like, wisdom plays into that power. Sure. Like, I can't say Money will play living. into that yeah. power, one yeah. would say. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, again, I, I pause it to you or, or stop you there because I stopped you in your discussion to say, do we really want everyone to be equal? Because part of the thought is you've kind of bought into you don't want people to be equal because that's why you're sitting here getting your education. Hear me on that. You bought into not everyone being equal because you're sitting here now getting your education. In fact, your education, and you bought into this, it's going to give you social mobility. I, I would hope that's why you're here, because you're paying a lot of money for it, right? So again, I say to you, do you really want it to be equal? Are you going to a job interview saying, oh, and by the way, I have a degree. Oh, and by the way, I've done this. Or, oh, and by the way, I've done that. Do you really want it to be equal? Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's what I do. I kind of spin things, and then I look at you like, do you get it? I mean, I get it, but again, we're living in a capitalist society, so okay. it kind of complicates things. It does. It complicates, uh, complicates things very much so. All right, so let me go back to my PowerPoint because i got to add on to the discussion. All right, so I need to hit escape. Did that work? No. Maybe just minimize. Say this again? Maybe just minimize. Okay. And then find, oh, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, right there. Okay. Please tell me y'all see that. Yeah. Okay, great. Look at that. Please tell me y'all see that. All right, so let me go to the water bottle exercise. So in your notes, people who are writing stuff for your notes and stuff, title this the water bottle exercise. Water bottle exercise. Okay, so I have a water bottle in front of me. What can I do with my water bottle? Fill it. Say this again? Fill it. Fill it is one. Give me another. Share it. Share it. Okay. Ooh, kumbaya. Yay, share it. Okay. <laughs> what else can I do with it? Recycle it. What else can I do? Let your dog play with it. A little nervous on that one, too. But okay, yes, I could do that. Yes, what else can I do with it? You can destroy it. Oh, I can destroy it because technically it's my possession, right? Okay, what else can I do with it? Yes? Litter it. Oh, sure, I can. Thank you. All right, now she's in coming out the box. <laughs> What's going on with the rest of y'all? What else could I do with this box? Kind of think outside the box. Get coming. Get money, okay? It, elaborate, because I could take that a couple of ways with the get money. Over right here. Okay. Bottle deposit. Oh, sure, bottle deposit, sure. I didn't know if you were, uh, in one example, someone suggested cutting off the top, and then I could use it like a, as a, you know, penny bank type of thing. Look, so you, okay. They were thinking outside the box, because some of y'all like, that doesn't work. Yes? I've seen college students turn those into cups, like drinking cups. Very much so. That's a good one. What else? Come on, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, it's, it's can you dump it out? okay. I can dump it out. You see me dumping it out. Okay, come on, Kyle. Give me another one. Give me three more. Actually, uh, you see, Jay Major, right? Give me three more. <laughs> okay, that's this. Okay, what else? Science experiment. Okay, science experiment. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. And then what else can I do with it? Conceals a clear alcohol beverage. Oh, okay. <laughs> CJ makes her. Little nervous. Little nervous. Okay, 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 okay. You wouldn't do that. He, he, he. But okay. All right, okay. Yes, did you have one more? Collect a couple more and make homemade bowling games. Oh, yeah. That's a really good idea. That's out the box, too. Okay. So you see all these things that I can do with the bottle, right? But you'll also notice 
says, the bottle is my possession. The bottle is my possession. So since it's my possession, I can keep it. I can get rid of it. I can kick it. But it's my possession. Everybody with me so far? So you got this water bottle exercise. We talked about what I could do with it, but I purchased it, so it's mine. So since it's mine, I can do what I want to with it. When would that scenario change? Steals Someone steals it. Throw it, out. Throw it out. What else? Where else would it change when it's not mine anymore? I give it away. Technically, I could give it away, right? What else? I could sell it. Yes, it's empty, but this would be a good deal to sell. Well, sure, I could sell it. That's a good one. What else? When the government changes the rules on you can have water bottles. Okay, a little scary on that note, but yeah, <laughs> sure. If the government changes the rules, sure. Where you're going with that, I'm going to leave that alone. Okay, <laughs> but yeah, I got it. I'm totally, I'm, I'm totally messing with you, right? Okay, so think of this as my chattel. Think of this as my chattel. So let me give you a definition of chat. Okay, I should have a click. Okay, so chattel, here you go, Samantha. There you go. Chattel is any item of tangible, movable, or immovable property, except of real estate, connected with real property. So again, I started out the presentation, I said, are women chattel? So now that you have the definition, are women this tangible, movable object. Yes? Some maybe not all. Some maybe not all. How are you putting the sum in there? Because that's a shift. Some in the sense where, um, I'm not saying this for everyone, but sure. some people are forced into this lifestyle. Okay. This is like choosing it. Okay. But like prostitution. Sure. Like okay, so one could argue with this movable tangible, that a person could be a channel based upon their occupation. Okay. What else? Cultural. Yes. Cultural meaning what? That it's not the same in the entire world. Sure. So where I, I'm standing, it could be a difference, right? Okay. What else? Russell? I would say probably like their social class. Man, oh, we're going to open that Pandora's box. Go ahead, Russell. <laughs> Because I would say, like, within within our system, like, we're obviously class, we're, they're class based. You have the upper class, the middle class, and then you have what is cl classified as the poor class. But sure. also, you would, I would object and say that the middle and the poor class together make the working class. Okay. And so, I mean, based on how much income you bring within a household, <laughs> fluctuates kind of how much either. Oh, you, how much power that you have within yeah. the structure. Uh, what's your first name? Nicholas. Nicholas. You you buying this? You buying what Russell's selling? Because he's selling some stuff. Yeah. Oh, really? Money is power. Okay, so for some people in society, money is power. How many people on that bus? Uh, uh, my, okay, especially Miss Government. Over, okay, yes, money is power. <laughs> buying it somewhat, yes? All right, so if I ask you the question again, our women chattel, we have some people in the room that say, Based upon our social class, maybe. Based upon the culture, maybe. Maybe, maybe based upon the occupation, yes. But in some of the cases that you name, are men child as well? Yes. But notice the focus for this one is women. Okay. And I appreciate you going for the men, but the focus, and I'm taking a very feminist stance. You want to put this in your notes, too? <laughs> <laughs> taking a very feminist stance to say that the focus for us tonight is just on women. Comparison is good. I don't want to take away from that. All right, so let me keep going. All right, so let's talk about some ritualistic aspects to ask this question, are you shattered? Okay, so I'm going to take something really simplistic, and then, of course, I'm going to muddy the water. All right, marriage proposal. That's the first one that's up there, right? Let's check it. Yeah. Okay, marriage proposal. I decide, I've been with this person for uh, three years, I decide to ask him to marry me. Deviant or not? Think about it. <laughs> I decide, we've been together for three years. I like you, you like me. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. In fact, I take him and we go look at rents. 
Look at some of y'all. I'm losing the room. We look at ranks. I'm like, okay, which one do you like? So oh, that looks pretty good. So okay, all right. So it's kind of like, you know how you have that discussion? Where are we going? Where is this relationship going? So have a nice dinner and everything. And then I asked him, is this deviant? Come on now, I gotta, is this deviant? I asked him, I got on my knees. <laughs> is this deviant? You're not wearing a name tag. Is this deviant? Yeah, I'm looking right at you. Is this deviant? Yeah, oh, you're saying yes. Okay, so how many yeses are in the room? How many yeses are in the room? Is this deviant? Okay, why are you saying yes, Jane? Well, because I don't hear of women. If, if it's a man and a woman. Yes, I'm going with a man and a woman scenario, yes. Getting down on bended knees on the stage. Sure. And you're not feeling it? He should have done it? Something's wrong with me? No. No, she's like, no, I don't want to say that. But it's a, it's 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 a deviant act, right? Well, I don't know. Deviant. Okay. It's out of the ordinary. Okay, so deviant uh, typically <laughs> means yeah, going against the social norm. So is the expectation a male is supposed to ask a female? Is that the expectation? Okay. Yes, you're like yes, because y'all drove an hour to see me. Yes. We're all. Okay. What? Well, <laughs> what does the age? <laughs> you're like okay. Uh, anybody? Yes. Sure, if we're supposed to be equal, hey, what happened to all those people, us being equal? Did I lose some of those people? I thought we were all equal. If we're all equal, I can ask him. And it shouldn't be a big deal. Or are you thinking to yourself, Bethany, something's wrong with me? Sure, really? So if I tell my buddies, I ask him, what did they, look at everybody like, oh no. How about this? What is he going to say to his buddies? What are you going to think then? That'd be to you, Kyle, because you're sitting right in front of me. They're going to be mad at him. Oh, why are they going to be mad at him? Oh, okay, because is that his role? That's what society does. Oh, what do you think? Good, good answer. What do you think? <laughs> Whoever wants to do it first. Oh, because we're equal, but you're still... I don't think we're Oh, okay. So you're not on the equal anymore. Anybody else? Where are you at with all of this? Yes. Where are you at with all of this? I asked him. I think it's fine. I would like to be asked personally. I sure. Think Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't <laughs> out of the whole room? Who wouldn't? Marry me. I love you so much. You're such a wonderful person. <laughs> Who wouldn't? I'm just saying to you, we started off when we said, well, we want everyone to be equal. Here's something very simplistic. But very ritualistic. Plus you're setting your own standards for what you want. Very much so. To say, hey, I feel comfortable in my space. I feel comfortable in what I'm doing. Would it be abnormal or deviant just us looking at rings? Look at some of y'all like, yes. All right, so let me go to the next one. We get married. You see us, right? You see me married? Yeah. You sure? <coughs> Most people say no. Really? Yeah, because of the purple hair. No. <laughs> okay, okay, so you feel it. Okay. Okay, we get married, and the next thing up there is the last name, right? So we're going to hyphenate. Everybody with me so far? We're going to hyphenate. So my last name is James. His net last name is Wilson. It's going to go James Wilson for both of us. <coughs> you gonna buy that? It's gonna go James Wilson. My name's first. Because when we have children, and, and, and you can look this up, for most schools, they drop the very last name. Because <laughs> I have nieces and nephews with hyphenated names. A couple, they'll drop names after a while. They'll be like, well, we're, we got this one. That's good enough. I know that. So my name will always be there. <laughs> You buy that? Yes, I saw your hand. I think it depends on where you are, even within the state of Maine. Okay. Um, oh, that's good. Name. Okay. My last name is way more comfortable down there than it is up here. Okay. Um, and why is that, do you think? Um, a lot of different reasons. Okay. We want to throw out some? 
Probably not. <laughs> 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 Nothing at all. You're not going to give me anything I can run with. Something, anything I can. Help me. Religion. Okay, religion would be yes. fine. Okay, again, going with this ritualistic aspect. And I lost you on the first section. You okay with the hyphenated name? Or should I take his name? Oh, no. You should take his name. Okay. You can change yours, I don't. Okay, so you you're, you don't buy, you're okay with that. I'm gonna keep my name, but we're gonna hyphenate it. You okay with that? Mm -hmm. and, and let me kind of give you a little history. You know, the the whole thing with the hyphenated is I'm actually one of three females. It's just all girls on our side. So once uh, our blood, you know, the last name will be gone after us, right? So really, I'm just keeping it because I want to make sure that the the last name keeps on going. With Oh, look at some of you like, oh, I buy that. Yeah, yeah. But what if I didn't have that justification? What if I just was like, hey, I feel empowered and I want to keep my last name and I want to be a part because we're joining, so we'll have both. It's confusing when you get. Okay, what's the part? Okay, which part is confusing? For children sometimes, if they have a hyphenated name or if they marry someone that has a hyphenated name. Yes, and then you keep on hyphenated, and in some cultures they do. Look at some of you like, really? Yes, this happens. <clears throat> it does, it does happen, right? All right, so let me add some uh, theory to this. You want to put this in your notes. <coughs> All right, the theoretical perspective is Irving Goffman. The theoretical perspective is Irving Goffman. I kind of feel like some of y'all have heard of this. Who, who we got heard of it? Yes. All right, so start me off with Goffman. Tell me a little bit about Goffman. Um, I mean, Basically, the main thing that we've learned about is like institutionalization and kind okay. of like how, in in my specific course, like uh, punishment and corrections, sure. kind of, the the whole Stanford Prison Experiment is kind of what we specifically have been looking at. Okay. So. It's okay. I'm gonna add on to it. How's that? Anybody else up here? Because I know a couple of you are in that punishment class. Yes. What do you have? Oh, you gonna go off in this morning? Okay, let me start us off. Okay, for Goffman, he talks about this dramaturgical approach. With the dramaturgical approach, he talks about this front stage, backstage, and presentation of self. So how I present myself in the front stage is going to be totally different than how I present myself in my backstage. How I present myself in my front stage is going to be different than what you see in the back. So, let me give you an example. In my front stage, I'm Dr. James. Everybody's still with me so far. When I step to my backstage, I could be Aunt Ted. I'm probably going to act different when I'm at Aunt Tay. I'm probably going to take out garbage when I'm Aunt Tay. When I'm Dr. James, then I'm going to be like, do I have to take out the garbage? You know. You're going to see me different, right? Okay. Goffman also talks about this whole thing of a script. With the script, it tells you your lines. It tells you what to say in a situation. Goffman also talks about this whole thing of a script, and he tells you what to say, your lines. So if I am in a social institution of academia, I'm going to say certain lines. When I go to church, they actually say Sister James. So I'm going to have, you know, at church, you're going to see me, I'll be like, hi. I'm hugging everybody, right? Which would be totally inappropriate if I start hugging everybody in this academic arena. Okay? Versus if I'm at home, then it's going to be Aunt Tech. All right, so let me add on some more vocabulary to this dramaturgical. We also, uh, with the dramaturgical and Goffman, he can be housed in criminology or sociology. With that sociology, they talk about ascribed status and achieved status that's on there. With that ascribed status, there are two characteristics that you can see from a distance that are given to me by society. The first one is race. So when you look at me, what race would you say that I am? Because you're looking down at me. What race would you say that I am? Black. Okay, why should you pick black? Look at everybody looking at me like, oh no. Why should you pick black? Skin tone. Okay, skin tone. Are you, do you feel confident in saying I'm black? No. Oh, that's good. But would you have guessed that? Yes. Okay. Anybody else? What are you going to say? How would you define my race? Human. Okay, human. I like this one. Okay. I thought you were just taping. <laughs> okay, human. Okay, homo sapien. Okay. 
Nothing wrong with you, this is what you chose, but then the question becomes, we categorize individuals, right? Okay. Then the other thing that most people feel comfortable with, and I, and I said it earlier today, is I have a big booty. Did you notice it? <laughs> Look at Kyle. I was like, no, I didn't notice it. I'm not going to say I noticed it because I don't want any problems. Yes, okay. So you feel confident in saying that I'm a female, right? Yes, you feel confident in that, right? Those would be the scribe status. Everybody with me so far? Then I go up to achieve status. Achieve status is talking about the degrees I have. Achieve status would be the degrees. So I have a PhD, and I also have a JD, actually. I have a PhD, and I have a JD, right? So then the question becomes, when you first met me, what did you notice first? Did you notice my race or my gender? That'd be to you. Yeah, I am asking you. Gender. All right, how many people on the gender bus? Which one did you notice first? And no, you can't pick both. Gender, gender, Russell, you're not, okay. How many people notice race first? Because I saw you during lunch. You, did you notice race first and we're not choosing? I, Which one did I, you notice? You, I mean, you can see me from I, a distance. Look, from a distance you can see Two aspects, right? You can see it very easily. Which one did you notice first? I guess race. Race, why? I don't, I don't know. That's just what. There's nothing wrong with it no, if you no, notice no. race. Yeah, yeah. It's just really trying to get you to start to think about why you went to race first. I saw you in the cafeteria. Which one? That was race. Okay, well, oh, he said it, it was race. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> why race first? live in the widest state in America. Yes, I noticed that when I was in Walmart. Now, here, here's a good story, because i got to make sure I'm watching the time. I'm in Walmart, and the guy's like, hey, hey. I was like, hey, how, how you doing, right? Right after you dropped me off, how you doing? I know you. I said, do you? He said, I saw your picture. So he's going on, and I'm thinking to myself, yeah, because I have a feeling you haven't seen many people like me. In the area, right? Right? So it's something that you would notice, right? Okay. So then the question becomes out of the two, though, and looking at the achieve versus the ascribe, which one becomes my master status? And you want to put this in your notes, being your master status, because my master status has to take me from one social institution to the next. So then the question becomes, which one is my master? And for this, I'm going to choose for you. I'm going to say my gender is my master status, because that's what we're focusing on. Okay, Russell's like, no, I'm not buying it. Okay, let me keep going. All right, so let me put in the race card into this. All right, so when we're talking about ascribed status, achieved status, and women, then we group women up, and I line them up all along here. Do you see them? You got that kumbaya going on, right? Yes. There's probably going to be some differences based upon race. So historically, when we look at African American women, historically, they were chattel. Historically, when you look at African American women, at one point in time, they were chattel. They were bought and sold. They were chattel. So then the question becomes, or let me add to this chattel, it was also a time historically where they had this fancy, they call it fancy slaves. And those fancy slaves were slaves that looked, that were mixed, actually. They were mixed. So it was a higher price for that person. And then historically, too, we have this rule called the one drop rule. So if you have one drop of African American, one drop of anything, you become that minority. And historically, it was tied to the whole thing of making sure the mother and her children were able to be sold as chattel. So we had this one drop rule, and it's still on the books in a lot of areas. We had this one drop rule because the thought was we let the child to the mother, and then that's how the person was sold. So then the question becomes, and let me go past here for just one moment. Are certain women chattel? Are certain women chattel? And human trafficking. 
Okay, human trafficking will be one. But does that make me more vulnerable if I'm a minority? Yes. Okay. All right, so let's add on the legal aspects to it. Okay, so I'd be remiss. This is the ending of Black History Month. We're jumping into women's history if I didn't talk about these legal aspects. So with the legal aspects, you have the 13th and the 14th Amendment, I have rights. You have the Title uh, Seven, looking at the civil rights and employment practices, and then you have that 14th Amendment looking at that federal state and local laws. So let me stop here. The question becomes, if I want you to give me or my rights to be present, do I have to make you give them to me? <clears throat> let me try it again. If you own all the cookies in the jar, will you share them? <coughs> Or do I have to make you share them? If you owned all the cookies in the jar, because I have certain rights within society. We can go to uh, Bill of Rights. I mean, there's a ton of things there. Why would someone share it? And would you? Okay, say this again as well. It's not okay. You said not your cookies, so you're gonna keep your cookies, right? Keep my cookies. All right, that's fair. What, are you gonna share? It? Yes. Um, I would say that depending on whether or not you share it depends on your personal morals and how you view a situation. If someone doesn't have cookies and you feel sympathy for that person, you would be probably more fond or willing to share what you have with that person. Okay. If you don't feel that sympathy or empathy, um, then you're less likely to. Okay, so is it a, a sympathy thing or is it, I have the cookies, now I'm gonna figure out how I can give you a cookie, but I can benefit. I like you as a person. If I share my cookies, it benefits me. Mm -hmm. Okay, because okay, so that's a benefit to me. So the fact that I'm sharing, is it the sympathy or I'm really just trying to figure out how I can benefit? I think again, that depends on the person. Okay, where are you at with this? I'm a business major. So okay, that's great. <laughs> okay, okay. I think personally, is that like if I were to give something away, I would want something in return. Okay. So, so the only way you're sharing if you figure out a way to say, and you're turning red, we're good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the only way you're sharing is if you know you're getting some type of benefit. Okay. Is everybody with Nicholas on it? The only way you're sharing is if you get some kind of benefit. And I'm sorry, say your first name again. Lynn, don't forget, Lynn also said or, or talked about the aspect of even if I do get a cookie to you, you're still kind of benefiting because it's like, okay, I feel good. Yes? I mean, like, I wouldn't go offer a cookie or something. Okay, you wouldn't offer a cookie, so we know you're going to be in the house holding and pouring the cookies, right? Is that no, someone, looking out the window? No, no, if someone came and asked, sure. I would have a cookie or if I'm eating a cookie in front of someone because I get offered. Okay, okay, then you would share a little bit. Okay. All right. Asking you shall receive. Asking you shall receive. Okay, all right, so let me keep going. Okay, tied to this next is this whole thing of within this realm you have discrimination and prejudice. I mean, for me not to go there would be, hey, I'm missing out, right? But then also within this dramaturgical model, remember, I have that front stage and I have that backstage. So how I present myself may be totally different than what goes on in that backstage. Okay. Then from there, looking at uh, the history and civil rights you have, it refers to efforts towards achieving true equality for African Americans, and then historically it's transformed to everyone else. But with this equality, do we really want to achieve it? So then we have some criminal justice majors in here. <laughs> With the criminal justice majors, we have some differences and special population. All right, so part of this discussion, if I'm looking at women, the question becomes, are women a special population? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, why? And, and notice when you say special population, then that means it's a difference. So I have to treat them differently. I thought we started off and you guys said you wanted everyone to be equal. Oh, yeah, uh huh, yeah, go ahead, Russell. We know you're a CJ Baker. Come on, check it out. Give me a little theory. I don't know. I would just say, like, there's a difference between wanting people to act equal and then there's a 
there's a difference between our biological differences. Like, we there's no arguing men and women are different. Like, sure, we're physically within, different. Yeah, within, sure. Like, within our CJ program, we've gone through many, like, within a lot of, like, programs and whatnot, women need a lot of gender-specific needs. Right. So... And I even said this one this afternoon. I said, if I have a, two correctional facilities, one being a male and then another being a female, we know at the female I have to have a doctor, a gynecologist. I have to have a, I, I feel confident we don't need to send a gynecologist over to the male facility, right? Just technical differences, right? Okay. But do you want to give women the title special population? Yes. No. Why? Because. As a, like, if you're a woman and you want equality, you want to be treated the same. Sure. It's like, if we're working, um, I don't know, same job, whatever. I don't want you to treat me different because I'm a woman. Okay. Because being a woman doesn't stop me from doing the same thing that a man would do. Okay. It's just one of those things, I just am a woman. That doesn't stop me from achieving something. Okay. So you treating me differently or um, weaker or whatever, I'll give you the easier tasks, whatever. That's an insult. And... I don't want to be insulted. Sure, I want to be equal with everyone else. But we know that there's a difference. And in that difference, do I need to adjust? Okay, I got a yes. Okay, what's. Uh, I was going to say, uh, where does equity play into this? Because I'm a firm believer in equity rather than essentially equality in the sense that in society we're going to have people that need more support systems than other people. Sure. Um, I plan on going into teaching. So okay. in education, they talk about how um, some of your students will need more support systems than others. So if we consider women as part of a special population, you mentioned the gynecologist, would that be considered part of equity where you realize women are going to need a gynecologist? Where sure. Men don't? Where they don't. But then can I use the term equal? Because I started you off by saying, do you want everyone to be equal? And most of you said yes. Is it a situation of equal? I say it's more equity. Okay, so now you want to switch. Yes? Kind of going off what you were saying, like you know, what I said earlier in class, it's more like it should be more fair than equal, because fair and equal aren't the same thing. Okay, because I could be fair to Samantha <laughs> in one way and then totally fair to Bethany in a different way, right? Yeah, so the, yeah, what it depends <coughs> on me on need, but then, especially with your example too, does that create a world though where who's making that decision? And then do, how does that impact a policy? Because with a policy, you want it to be fair or equal across the board. You don't want to get into that discrimination or prejudice, right? So if I have a policy that I put into place, we want to point to something to say, this is equal to everybody else. Or is it, I don't really want that, yes? I think in making those policies, like women should make policies about women, because women know women. Which you started us off with in the beginning to say, if we don't have that representation, is something lost. Yes. Okay. Let me keep going. All right. And you heard me say, are there certain women as channel being a vulnerable population? Let me add this. Within some institutions, you have that institutionalized discrimination, that disparity in outcomes that's from established policies or procedures that's put into place. So we have a policy that, in theory, in theory, we want it to work out. But in actuality, when we play it out, it's benefiting one group versus another group. And then the thought is, with this too, we go to Du Bois. Du Bois talks about this whole thing of this double consciousness. And he brings that from this black, the souls of black folks. And he asks the question of, if you're dealing with a minority woman specifically, if you're dealing with a minority woman specifically, can she fully develop her identity if it's not the dominant ideology? Okay, I got a no real quick from Len. Okay, go ahead, yes, you wanna elaborate? <laughs> uh, well, speaking as a minority woman. Sure, okay. okay. Thank you, you didn't have to, but I appreciate it. Go ahead. So when we get back to uh, labels like special populations, sure. certain populations, minority populations, yes. have been labeled special, which causes a lot of anger in other populations. Yes, or this divide within. 
within the other populations. Yes. And when you have that divide, are you doing more harm than good if I use that equal, if I use that equity? Because you want to help individuals, right? But then the question becomes in the policy, what should I use to make sure that I'm being fair? But you can't walk in line as others do with the same things. Sure, you can't. But again, that goes with that Goffman model, again, of that presentation of self. Am I giving you the illusion that I want to equal? But in my back stage, well, if it's equal, who cares? A few more thoughts. All right, so let's test this theory out. All right, so here you have minority woman, and specifically we'll, we'll run with me. I have two strong ascribed status. Women, here's this side, race, this other side. What should be my priority? Because if I split it, I'm not really, I'm kind of in one, out of the other. What should be my priority? Okay, say this again. I didn't, I heard a mumble. Which is a woman. A woman. Woman for this one. Who else? Because women are going to say, women. See? See me rallying with the women. Women. Yeah, yeah, women. Because I don't want people historically to call me chap, right? Other side, race. Race. Come on. Right? Because I historically don't want people to call me chap. Yes. Which do you feel affected most by? Oh, you tried to flip the question to me. Good try. <laughs> supposed to be y'all. I, I think that plays a big part in it. Okay, but is that going to be the route for everyone or do we need to come up with something because at some point you're going to have to decide. Because if, and, I, and I'll give it to you again because I know you don't, I mean we, this is our second time but I, I have a feeling you don't, you know, like it when I create the grades. Okay, here's a gray area. I can't have my foot in both sides. If I have it in both sides, then I'm not really solving one of the issues, one could argue. If I put my feet together, then I can really protest and be like, can't you see me? Can't you see me? Okay, you see me married, but you can't see me protesting. Okay, <laughs> I'm protesting, right? But I'm on that side versus if I'm on this side, I have to pick a priority, right? Why do you have to be Why can't you be? Oh, okay, which goes to Patricia Hill College. She talks about this whole issue of intersectionality. To truly understand a person, to truly understand a person, you have to look at more than one of the isms of that person. Good question on why you have to pick, because at some point, something has to become your priority, so it's the focus. So you can get kind of something pushed through, some type of policy. I'm going with the boys to argue or to agree with them to say in that double consciousness, the identity isn't fully met. This is the struggle a minority woman would be going through because it's not that dominant ideology. Go for it, would you have your hand? Um, I was going to say we're made to think that it's race because it's that whole idea of fixing it at home before you try to fix it somewhere else. Sure, very much so. So you want to like do the race stuff and then worry about the Oh, okay, so stuff. you're saying get with the race. Yeah, but then at the same time, it's like that's what I'm told, but then it's like why should you? Me why should I ignore the fact that I'm a back, woman? Yeah. yeah, why should I force? Now, under that, I also talk about age and class. So if you haven't noticed, I'm a little older. Don't say like this morning, I'm a grandma, <laughs> but I'm a little older, right? And then if you notice, as you get older too, your finances change, business major, right? Your finances changes, right? So that will put me in a certain income bracket. And with that income bracket, I would have resources available to me versus if I'm in a different income bracket. So then the question becomes, if I start adding on all these isms, what should be the priority? Should my class be the priority? Should the fact that I'm over 40, don't guess over 40, be the priority? Or should it stay at that race and gender? As the room goes silent, you gotta pick one, which should be the, or, which I, I have a feeling the two of you will be, should I just stay with Patricia and say, to truly understand me, to truly get a minority woman, you have to look at all the isms. And if you just look at one, you'll be missing out. Some of you are saying yes, 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 you're on board with that. But if you're on board with that, am I missing out on changing policy? Am 
Am I missing out on changing policy? All right, so have this black woman with a reason to be angry. And now let's go back to Kahoot. All right. Oh, did we actually get it without any help? Okay, give me a second. Thank <laughs> you. 
because I purchased the water bottle. Then I talked about this whole thought of I can dispose of it, I can take it away, I can move it, um, but still I have possession of it. Then I asked this whole thing, or had you look at, we good? Okay. Then I had uh, us look at this whole thought of our women shadow, and shadow meaning that just like this property, can you own women? And I said historically, for some women they were shadow, right? So part of the discussion to me is, and, and where it ties into the leadership portion is, you have to know the historical portion. And in you knowing the historical portion, you have to ask the question to yourself daily. That's why I went to the dramaturgical approach when you go into the presentation of self to say, this is how some people may see me when they're interacting with me. This is how some people may see me when they're interacting with me. And then you have to move beyond that, because at some point, um, you're going to want to dispose of that shadow label. But unless you recognize it and realize it, how can you move beyond it? And with that, thank you for your time.